All right, so funny thing, right? I got a comment which literally just told me that, like, I optimize my code too much, right? Which sounds completely insane. But this guy basically, his reasoning, okay? Which, you know, I'll let you decide if it's stupid or not, is like, oh, you know, you optimize your code, which is, you know, great. That's, you should do that. But then the issue is, you know, a lot of people who watch you are beginners, right? Or, or they don't even know how to code at all. So it's like, you could show me how to optimize. And it's like, you could technically make me understand why you should optimize code. But it's like, as a beginner, I need to learn how to write code, right? Like, it's like my biggest issue isn't the fact that my code isn't optimized. It's the fact that my code is just so terrible that it's like, it doesn't even work sometimes, okay? And so this guy challenged me. He said, you know what I think you should do? Make a game with the worst code imaginable. So that's literally it. Like my challenge right now is just to, you know, think of some quirky game idea and then literally just try and write it with the worst code imaginable. Or in fact, actually, to add on to the aspect of this being a terrible video, I'm not even going to think of a game idea. How about we just start writing our first script and just, you know, see what happens. I'm just thinking we start by like adding random shit and then from there just getting more ideas. So I think, I mean, the, the obvious thing to do would just be to start to create a part. And no Roblox game is complete without a part, obviously, right? And so I'm going to make a script inside the part, okay? Um, and yeah, I don't know. How do we make this script insanely terrible? Hmm. <laughs> you know what actually would be funny? We, we should get the workspace, okay? And we can get the workspace by saying we can make a variable for it. We can say local WS is equal to game uh, get service workspace okay um yes or we could also do local vs uh two and we could say game dot workspace okay so we're gonna have two variables <laughs> for the workspace um <laughs> which you know it, it's a it's a good start it's a good start okay so we have the workspace um and then i'm thinking what do we do okay we want to find this part all right we need to find this exact part so what I think, because I'm, I don't know, I'm like, my brain is struggling right now. How can we find this part? Like, we have this script, you know, it's parented to the part. Um, yeah, so let me check. Yeah, so if I print out script.parent, it's going to be the part. So it's parented to the part. But it's like, how do we find the parent of the script? I think what we should do is we should just do a loop, okay? So we should loop through, um, which one? Let's do WS. So we're, WS get children, do... Or no, actually, what we should do, eh? Local VS children, and then we should do um, local VS2 children, okay? Like so. Um, and then what I'm thinking we do is then we say VS children is equal to VS... Let's say 2, VS2, okay? Get children, okay? And then VS2 children will be equal to VS get children, okay? And so now I think what we could do is we could use VS2 uh, children, okay? And so basically, we're going to loop through the children of WS, WS2 children. We're going to loop through all of this, okay? Um, obviously, amazing code right off the bat. Like, you can see how beautiful and amazing this is, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if V, um, if not V is a base part, so if it's not a part, or, or no, actually, wait, and not V.name, or wait, no, and, and V.name is part, then V destroy end. So in short, if this isn't our part, then we're going to destroy it, okay? So like if I run the game, for example. Hmm, you know what? That's actually fine. And then, okay, now we got to find whether it's a part, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to also do another for loop. So I'm going to say for ii, vv in um, v get children do, okay? And so then we're going to say, so we're going to, we're going to loop through the items in the workspace. Okay. We're going to loop, loop through all the items and then we're going to loop through all of the items inside of every item. Okay. So we're going to do that. And then uh, VV is equal to the items inside of the item in the workspace. And so now what we got to do is we just need to check if VV is a, is a script and VV dot name is equal to script then. Okay. So now if we know that there's a child inside of a thing called a script well then what we do is then we say uh we'll actually make a variable for for it here called local part and we'll say parts is equal to script.parent okay so in this way we are getting the part okay um and then what we, what we could do is we could print the part okay so we could actually print it and see if it works right so let's see oh beautiful yo actually wow okay 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 See, okay, this code actually is so good. Like, look at this. We've managed to get the part, okay? So that's good. I love it. I love it. Straight off the bat, we're, we're doing amazing things, okay? 
So now that we have the part, okay, now that we have the part, um, hmm, you know what I'm thinking? You know what I'm thinking? What if, okay, I want to do a thing where every two seconds, okay, the part becomes semi-transparent and then goes back to being fully transparent. So let me show you what I mean, right? So we can say part dot transparency is equal to zero, right? Meaning it's fully visible. Then we can wait, okay, we can wait one second. And then we can say part dot transparency is equal to 0 0.5, okay? Um, and then we can do another wait, like so. And so what I'm thinking is, I just want this to keep on going for like a while, right? So um, let me try. Yeah, so we could do this, and then a little bit of that. And then I guess I could copy all of this, and then I could just, um, yeah, let me see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, oh, wow. Yeah, there we go. I zoomed in for your convenience. Obviously, like I said, um, you know, I do want this to be like a long thing, um, you know, because, you know, when the player's playing the game, I want the part to con consistently keep on changing transparency, right? I want it to c forever keep on looping through the transparencies. And um, I, yeah, I think this is the way to do it. I think all we need to do is just keep on repeating this line. And yeah, I have no idea how I zoomed. I, I don't know what I did with the script, but you know what? I'll keep this, okay? I actually, yeah, okay. I think I think this is quite nice. Oh, what? No, no, look at that. Oh, that's so annoying. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, you know you know what I'll do? You know what I'll do? Uh, oh, yeah, no, because see, it, it's like bugging out. Oh, that's annoying. What if I run the game? Is it going to work? Oh, it does work. Oh, awesome. Oh, beautiful. Okay, yeah, yeah. Perfect. So yeah, I, I guess I guess the script is fine. Um, so that's enough of the part, okay? So we identified the part, and we're now changing the transparency of the part, which is great. Okay, we can actually probably resize the part and make it like, like you know, fairly big. Like, yeah, I'm, think I'm thinking like this, okay? But then now it's actually time to understand, like, okay what how do we actually make this into a real game okay because right now okay fine this is the part right and it does its thing we're like okay it's like semi-transparent and then it's like i don't know not transparent or whatever so now what i'm thinking we do okay is i want to make a new script and inside of the script i want to loop through every player okay so what we're going to do is we're going to say game dot players we're going to say child added okay so whenever something gets added to the players we're going to connect it uh yeah connect it to a function okay which will give us the actual child, like so. Code assist can save you time. Start by writing some code to set the context. Dude, honestly, this is one of the most annoying features I've ever seen. I'm not even joking. Like this shit, Roblox should lose money because of this feature. So whenever a child gets added to the players, oh, I'm thinking, what do we want to do, okay? What I want to do, how about this? Is that whenever the player touches this part, okay? Then they're gonna, uh, how about this? They're gonna explode and then they're gonna get a point, okay? So let's actually do that. What I'm gonna do is I'll say local leader stats okay and then local point okay point sure why not um and then i'm gonna say leader stats is equal to instance dot new folder okay like so um and then i'm gonna parent it immediately to the to the the child which is gonna be the player okay and then i'll say leader stats dot name is equal to um leader stats like so okay fairly simple fairly simple and then i'll say point S same thing okay instance dot new you know we're gonna make an int value you know we're gonna parent it to the leader stats folder, and then I'll say point it dot name is also equal to point, like so. Okay. So now what this is gonna do, okay, is that if I were to play the game, then now I have a leader stats thing with points. Okay. Now obviously when I touch this, nothing happens, right? Uh, uh, it's upsetting. I understand. So we need to fix that. Okay. We need to use our amazing script to actually fix this, right? Because like we we don't want this to happen. Okay. Um, actually, you know what I'm thinking? Actually, I think it'd be, it'd be a lot easier to actually put this, these variables over here. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I do think that actually would be better. Okay. I'm, lo I'm losing my mind here. Okay. How about, how about we do this? Okay. We're gonna get the character of the, of the, the player. So we're gonna say local car and then we're gonna say car is equal to child dot character. Okay. Character like so. Or child, or no, wait, child, character, character, added, wait, okay? So basically, we're going to get the character, but if the character hasn't loaded in yet, then we're going to actually loop through the character, okay? And so I think if I play the game, I don't think that should give me an error. I think that should be fine. That's fine. Beautiful. So now we need to check whenever, uh, like, our character touches the part, okay? And I think the best way for us to do that is we're basically going to loop through the character, okay? And so what I'm thinking is I'll do local car children which will be equal to you may you might have guessed it car get descendants okay beautiful so this will get all the descendants of the character all right and then i'll say for i comma v in car children okay so we're gonna loop through all the all the children do and what i'm thinking is we can actually do a test dot wait for like a second i i I, th I think we could do that um and then we could we could also say v 
which is you know the part if v is a base part okay then we can say v dot touched connect function okay so basically if the we're gonna loop through the character okay if hit dot name is poi like what is that bro okay but basically right if uh <laughs> i'm gonna remove the test set wait i don't even know why it's here we're gonna loop through the characters modeled and then if the thing touches uh the part so if if hit is is a okay if if it's a base part all right base part and hits dot name is equal to part then we're just gonna take the point okay so we're gonna say point dot value plus equals one okay so let's see let's see how this plays out okay let, let's see how this plays out so do we have the point yes we do beautiful oh solid oh would you look at that awesome yeah there we go as you can see it's a fantastic script because you know it works and my character is actually levitating i don't know if you noticed this but yeah looks 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 pretty cool right and so let's see we are at uh 1000 points amazing look at that he's jumping with giddy and joy and so i think to end this off okay what more could we ask for than to make a button okay so i'm gonna make a button i'll do it okay you're gonna watch me live i'll make the button text button uh i think i think here would uh, yeah i think a button here actually would be good um and then yeah instead i can just make a local script okay easy peasy I, a scrolling frame yeah sure i mean i can I'll, I'll place it here okay and then what i'll do is i'll make a local script and then to get the actual uh thing to get the actual thing we need to do and this is actually the most advanced piece of code you're gonna see yet okay local plr is equal to game dot players or no wait I, actually I'm, I'm sorry local player is is equal to game get service players okay so i'm sorry about that um then we need to say players right and then what we need to do is we need to say um local player okay and then we need to do is we need to say um we need to get the button okay we need to get the button so i'll say local button we don't know what it is yet right what we're gonna do is we're gonna go we're gonna loop through all the players we're gonna say for i comma v in players okay get children get children so we're gonna loop through all the players and we're gonna say if v dot name is equal to player dot name okay then so we're gonna loop loop through all the players and if if the player who we have right now corresponds with the player well then we're gonna say local r player is equal to v okay and then we're gonna say local uh player gui is equal to v wait for child player gui right and then we're gonna say button is equal to player gui wait for child screen gui wait for child uh text button and then and then we'll say button destroy and yeah that that actually does that actually does work quite well obviously we don't we don't want to destroy the button okay what we want to do is we want to say uh we, we want to make it a connection so we'll say button press okay like this and, and we'll say yeah local button press um and then we'll say button press is equal to um and then we'll say button dot activated okay so whenever the button is actually pressed activated we'll connect it to a function like so okay very very easy very simple and so when the button is actually activated what i want to do is i want to find uh we, i want to send a message to the server which we can do by adding a remote event okay um actually let's add let's add multiple let's add two so there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a little luck element there's gonna be two remote events we have no idea which which one is gonna be called right so i'll say game replicated storage uh local rs is equal to game replicated storage then we'll say rs wait for child remote events okay so we're gonna make a variable for that as well um and then we'll say <laughs> event fire server so we're gonna fire the server okay and then i'm thinking we just say button press uh disconnect yeah yeah we're gonna disconnect it meaning that the button just cannot get pressed again okay and so instead of a server script i'm thinking here we could just say game replicated storage wait for child remote events so we're going to do the whole variable thing again which i know is it's 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 a terrible practice i understand we'll connect it to a function which will give us the player and then what i'm thinking we do is yeah we just say uh do we have the parts let's see we'll just say yeah, workspace dot part uh destroy okay so if i run the game right now let's see if i press the button it doesn't destroy it that is so sad that is that is tragic news what if i delete one of the remote events is it gonna work then because it better it better work i spent too much time on this yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah so clearly as you can see yeah and then the button just doesn't allow me to to do anything right in fact i think actually what we should do after pressing it is we should disconnect it and we should actually when we fire to server why don't we just say local ws is equal to workspace okay or no i'm sorry game get service workspace okay very important and then couldn't we just say like yeah yeah let's, let's try that let's, let's let's try that parent property of workspace is locked blah 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 
Okay, let's 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 try this then. Let's try this. What are what are we thinking of this then? Oh, beautiful, perfect, wonderful. And I'm thinking, yeah. So after 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 we actually hit the button, we should just probably say button destroy. Okay, we should we should we should destroy all of that. Destroy everything. The workspace. Um, probably also just kick everyone. I think would be fun. Um, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. We can just say four i i v v in game dot players get players right and then yeah we, we could just say vv wait for child player gui and then we, 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 could, we could just destroy that you know what i mean like i don't know i th I, th I think we could beautiful uh this, it's not finding the player gui that's because it I probably are, are already destroyed it <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> that, is, that is so funny well yeah um i love this is a beautiful game and yeah so that there there you go bro there's your script you know hopefully Hopefully, as a beginner, you've picked up on a lot of lessons because, you know, there have been a lot of lessons here. Um, you know, I've, I have I have tried to optimize this code as much as I could. And so I, I hope that actually helped you. You know, I hope you from now on forever use the same scripting style as I just showed you. OK, because, you know, this is what you're supposed to be doing, right? Like anyone who tells you to use for loops or whatever, they're stupid. You know, like I, I just use them because I have to. OK, but it's like usually like i'm not even joking every single advanced scripture actually does this right all of all of them do like i like I'm not, I'm not i'm not even like joking with you right now like that's that's what they do right and then yeah workspace the reason i'm doing this by the way is just because like um you just want more options when coding you know so like maybe, maybe you'll get tired of this workspace and you want to move on to this workspace because it happens right like you you know people are indecisive so and then you know the reason we're we're switching this or the reason we're saying we at ws children is equal to double ws2 children is because we don't want the children to actually cross contaminate so we want to have a them different to the children uh of of the variable to not um mix mix the children so yeah bro hope you learned something uh yeah so we are back to basics check out my course in the description <laughs> thank you for watching